interested in hearing from a self-made man, a man who understands what service to the community means, then stay tuned. Welcome to Northern Vibe. Thanks for tuning in. If we've never met, I'm Matt Maloney, host and founder of Northern Vibe. We're about sharing stories. This is where discussions are held with interesting and informed people to gain their perspective on a new state and any other issues that attract curiosity. Northern Vibe unashamedly advocates for a new state for Central and North Queensland, and that's what I'm here to discuss with my guest today. On this episode, you'll find out why a person of good country stock from the electorate of Morani was driven to drop tools and deprioritise a sport he loves and is passionate about, the stand for election and why he believes a new state is so important. Please like and share. We're growing, but we really need your help to keep up momentum. We're getting some really interesting locations where people are listening from. So please tell us where you are. Tell us who you are. Tell us where you're from. Ask questions, make comments. We've got some great suggestions on the comments page. So please keep them coming. Uh, this includes suggestions for guests. Now, if you're interested in becoming a guest on Northern Vibe, contact me through Facebook. It's highly likely that we'll get you on. Now, what do we mean by a new state? For new viewers and those unfamiliar with the details, jump on the new on the Boot Brisbane website. There you'll find breakdowns of facts and figures, as well as interviews with leading experts in the field of constitutional law, economics, and demographics. Every Wednesday, my colleague David Young does an excellent podcast on Podbean. Yes to a North Queensland state, Wednesday nights between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. Get the Podbean app and have a listen. Also, there's another really interesting online talkback show, High Humidity, with Nettie and Bunny online. Search them on Facebook and tune in. Now, right now, we are unashamed new state advocates, but we are growing and we are developing. In the very near future, we're going to have another podcast just on people, places, events, and interesting organisations. It's likely to come after the election, so keep an eye on Northern Vibe. Now, Queensland's state motto in Latin is Audax et Fidelis. Apologise if I got it wrong, but I'm confident it was more right than wrong. That translates as bold but faithful. Now, we North Queenslanders and Central Queenslanders want to move forward boldly, but we're still faithful members of the Commonwealth of Australian States. So to answer a frequently asked question on our web and on our Facebook pages, we are not successionists. We are faithful to the Commonwealth. We want to remain part of Australia. We just want to have control of our own destinies and form a new state. Now, we always have a mention in dispatches to a charity that we are thinking think are doing great work. And this week, a big shout out to YAPS, the Young Animal Protection Society in Smithfield. They're an animal refuge who rescue abandoned and unwanted, unwanted pets in cans. They stay there until their forever families come along and adopt them. They also provide a kennel and a cattery service. They have a no kill policy, which I think is really, really cool. They do great work and I recommend listeners jump onto their website and see how they can support. Now, tonight's guest is Jason Borg. I've done a bit of research on our guest and let me tell you, he's an interesting and accomplished chap. Born and bred Mackay in Mackay District, he's loved, he's loved basketball and been involved in the game since 1979 when he was a junior. He's a sprightly 40, 48 and uh, married to his wife, Kathy. The son of a former cane grower, Jason is well known around the Mackay and Pioneer Valley, which comes as no surprise uh, given his family standing within the region's strong Maltese community. They've contributed greatly to the sugar industry in the Pioneer Valley. Jason grew up on the family farm at North Eaton. He was educated at the local primary school before undertaking secondary studies at uh, Morani Mar High School. <laughs> Correct me, Jason, when, when That's we- That's right, mate. <laughs> Jason then re relocated to Rockhampton where he was a student at Central Queensland University. He studied his business degree and along the way, he followed his passion for ba basketball, playing in the Rockhampton Rockets in the State League. Rather impressive. After the 1991 season, Jason returned to Mackay, where he suited up for the mighty Mackay Meteors. He became a club legend, playing about 200 games for the team. Uh, he, in addition to that, he was a coach, and he was head coach for the Meteors from 2002 to 2004, and assistant coach from 05 to 06. Professionally, he's part owner of Borg, Borg's Real Estate. Jason Borg, basketball tragic and NQ candidate from, for Mirani. 
Mate, welcome. Thank you very, very much for coming on board. Thanks, Matt. Pleasure to be here. And it's Morani, mate. Morani. Morani. <laughs> Morani. I used to Marani live. I used, uh, mate, I used to Morani. I used to live <laughs> at Winton, and because um, I used to say Winton. And like the locals out there, I spent two years out there and the locals used to correct me and, I, and go, no, it's not Winton. And I was like, W-I-N-T-O-N. It's like, Winton. It's Winton. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I stand corrected um, and I apologise for my ignorance and, uh, yeah. That's but, right, mate. <laughs> yeah. Well, they say ignorance is bliss and that's why you see me smiling and laughing quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> I think it's part of my charm in this podcast. But look, let's find out about you. Um, Tell me, tell me a bit about tell tell me a bit about yourself generally. Oh well, I you know like just like you said, I grew up on a cane farm out at North Eaton, which is probably about 25, 30 kilometres west of Mackay. Um, my dad developed the farm when his original farm was resumed by the government to, put, uh, to build Kinchin Dam back in the early seventies. So he developed that farm, North Eaton Mill, gave him some ground, and he developed. That's bare ground into a cane farm. Grew up out there. Went to the local high school, uh, sorry, primary school at North Eaton. Uh, and then I did the last two years of primary school at Morani Primary, and then from there went to Morani State High School to do my senior education. Um, from there, I went to uh, did the first year of my university course here in Mackay. Spent two years in Rocky, and then back here to Mackay, and uh, I've been here ever since. Um, in 2000, uh, my father, after he uh, eventually sold, sold his cane farm, he went into real estate. And in 2000, he asked me to come along and, and join him in that, which I did. Um, and then he retired in I think it was 2008. And uh, I took it over all by, uh, by myself um, until 2017, when uh, Mackay Basketball approached me to, uh, to be the general manager of Mackay Basketball. Uh, going through a few tough times and dad was at that age where he was ready to retire and uh, my wife who was working uh, as our administration lady um, was happy to to go back to her old job so it was, it, was, it was a change after 17 years in real estate to come here and being a life member of the club and, and loving the club um, it was it was an opportunity that I didn't want to pass up at the time so yeah that's me in a nutshell mate well, um, kind of impressive, most impressive to uh, to uh, channel Darth Vader there. But look, tell me what what do you love about baseball or oh, basketball? Like well, I like baseball, but um, more more I like basketball better. Um, it's me, not you. No, that's fine, mate. Uh, basketball, it, you know, it's a team sport. Um, it's something I see with kids nowadays. You know, I I love watching the kids out there training and playing because then they don't have a device in their hands and they have to talk to their teammates and they have to. You know, it's a sport where if you don't talk um, or communicate, as we call it, um, you'll get nowhere as a team. So if you want to succeed, you have to communicate. And, and too, too often at the moment, a lot of kids don't know how to talk to you because they, they don't have that social experience. And basketball being a team sport like it is, um, I, I find it really great because, you know, I, I, can, I can talk to anybody from the, you know, from the under 10s to the senior age groups and, and, and have a conversation with them and, and talk about basketball, you know, because it's a passion of mine and, and it always has been. And yeah, I find it, yeah, I just like the social aspect of it and and the community around it. Well, well, sport links people, it really does. And I would imagine the communication skills that you've picked up from playing the game uh, have been particularly useful during during your campaigning. But before we, before we get too far, and I'm, and I'm sorry for our listeners, I know a lot of them are, are really serious about the political issues and really serious about the new state. I totally get that. I'm passionate too, but I'm genuinely, genuinely interested um, in your, your basketball because, you know, you, you raised, you came to a pretty high level, really. Wait, tell me about the best game you ever played. The best game I ever played. Oh, geez. Um, it was probably in Cairns. I think it was 19, what was that long ago? It was 1992. Um, and uh, it was, a, it was a guy, we, we had a, I'll be honest, we had a terrible team that year and we needed to win in Cairns to avoid the wooden spoon. And uh, we won the game 128 to 124. And I was lucky enough to, to uh, score 33 points and grab 21 rebounds in that game. That's probably the best game as an individual that I ever played. 
um, I had better achievements as a team, but uh, as, as an individual, that was probably the best game. That's great. Wait, tell me about your electorate. Well, Morani's quite a big electorate. I don't know if you know people around the state understand how big some of these um, electorates are. It's not a postage stamp like the regional, uh, sorry, the uh, the inner city electorates. It runs from pretty much the city gates of Mackay through Uralee all the way uh, south to about, oh, it's about 25 kilometres north of Rockhampton to the caves, and then goes southwest from Rockhampton around the city and then down uh, through Mount Morgan um, to, to Marmor, pretty much, out to the, the Giganga uh, Ranges out there. And uh, closer to home, uh, up to Yungla Dam, and pretty much around about the Eaton Range. And then it takes in a lot of uh, central west of the Isaac River sort of areas, you know, the, and the central coast, Clareview, St. Lawrence, Camilla, those sorts of areas. So it's, it's, it's quite a big electorate geographically, um, and so it takes a, a fair bit of work to try and get around to see everyone. Probably the main centres would be, you know, the Pioneer Valley, Walkston, Marion, Morani, and uh, and Serena. Probably the main areas, as lo as well as you know, uh, the Uralee area of Mackay, Baker's Creek, those sorts of areas. So Marmore is in your your area. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Well, it's right near the southern southern border of the electorate. Yeah. Yeah, my, my mum was born in Marmol, so there we go. There you go, mate. Yeah, it's, it's quite a, it's right. quite a big electorate geographically. Not as big oh, as the Vertigan, but uh, it, it's it's pretty pretty big electorate. Yeah. Look, I, and I know Youngler as well. I just I love that country up there. My wife and I um, spent some some very happy times up there um, just before we got married. But um, look, as much as I as much as I'd love to engage in this sort of uh, small talk conversation. Um, Tell me why you want to stand. What, what's made you passionate about? Because I'm thinking you're giving up a fair bit of your time and there's going to be a lot of travel involved in this. And, you know, it's no picnic standing for any elected, represent, any elected uh, position. No, and I, I have great respect for anybody that, that devotes themselves to public service. I, I don't care where, where you come from or, or what party you, you're representing. I have respect for those people because I know it's a lot of work. Um, basically, the... the the main reason when, when Costo, who's a very polarising figure, um, but Costo and I have, have known each other since we were nine years old. We were both uh, ball boys at Mackay Rugby League at the time. So we've known <laughs> each other since then and and uh, and kept kept a relationship all the way through. And, and when he first asked me, I, I thought about it. I thought, well, you know, I've, I've been one of these people that's, you know, in the background been, been quite outspoken in, in, in what I believe that people of Central North and Far North Queensland deserve and haven't got. And I could only see it getting worse. So I figured, well, if you're gonna, you're gonna spout off, do something about it. So uh, when he asked me, I said, righto, mate, I'll give it a crack because um, I genuinely believe in it. And um, and I, you know, I, I just think it's it's that time that the people need to put their hand up for the people of Central North and Far North Queensland um, to to have the opportunity to govern themselves. Look, I think that's incredibly noble. The whole thing about democracy is this, like when I'm having these discussions with people and, you know, I'm an Australian and a North Queenslander, but one thing that we do have as a people, which I find a little bit concerning to be candid, is apathy. Um, Donald Horn was partially right uh, when he titled his book The Lucky Country. He wasn't totally right because there were a lot of values behind that, but that's kind of a, a separate issue. But because we are really blessed with resources, like he was correct on that, uh, we're blessed with uh, we're blessed with relatively uncorrupt systems. We're blessed with a relatively good judiciary. We're blessed with uh, the Westminster system. We're blessed with all of these magnificent systems. And incidentally, uh, while I'm kind of going on this, uh, we're also blessed with having the magnificent Indigenous people that we have here too, because you know they they bring a very important perspective and a, a, and a unique new culture which which we all um which we all celebrate so really i can see you know i can see a lot of the best of both worlds sort of coming coming there but what it means what that means for us is we're not as passionate about democracy as say the americans or even the english uh, who were galvanized over the over the brexit issue and it's because we have this amazing capacity to take this magnificent system 
and the peace and the prosperity that we have for granted is something I kind of little find a little bit concerning. And it means that when I'm talking to people like you, or indeed any you know, other candidate, or a number of other candidates and elected representatives, like you, I share that deep admiration. I think it's fantastic that you're getting actively involved in democracy. So my kudos to my kudos to you for taking uh, for taking the time, more than just turning up and, and ticking your box at an election, which is not nothing incidentally. That's you know perhaps the most important part of the democratic process. But the fact that you're taking your time to stand on a platform and go out in public and say, my name is Jason and I believe this, that's no small thing. So you know, thanks very much for, for doing that. But mate, tell me about, you know, I know one of your policies from doing a little bit of research is real royalties for regions. Tell me about that. Well, as, as most people in Queensland will be aware, uh, the state government receives quite a substantial amount of money through royalties from uh, mining. Uh, basically, our, our real royalties for region, the $6 billion, was we want to quarantine that for the people of Central North and Far North Queensland. Now, people, I've had some people, you know, they, they, they misunderstand it and they think, oh, $6 billion. Six, understand six billion dollars is over the course of a of a government so four years so six billion dollars for the people of central north and far north queensland which is uh quite substantial amount more than than received in the past now i believe last year in mining royalties alone was 4.6 million dollars to the state government so if you times that by four you're looking at 18 million so we're looking for a third uh to quarantine for quite a large uh, geographically quite a large uh, piece of Queensland. Um, but the whole thing comes down to our critical mass. Um, you know, the Southeast Queensland, the population is growing um, quite substantially. And I believe that if, if that continues the way it's going with the uh, redistribution of uh, electorates and stuff like that, currently we have 73 electorates within, you know, it's about 200 kilometres, 250 kilometres of, of the Brisbane CBD, um, 20 outside of that, probably 17 more so in the, in the central north and far north Queensland regions. And that'll only get worse. So, it, you know, we, we could end up with like a 98 seat parliament and only 15 people representing all those people, which just isn't enough. Let's, let's mm. be perfectly honest. That's not enough. Um, and I believe in the people of central north and far north Queensland. I believe that we have the ability the population to run our own ship without being told what we need to do from people in southeast Queensland who quite frankly a lot of them would not have a clue what goes on in these areas and they're just following party lines and uh yeah that's that's and that's that's a lot of the reason why I, I decided to run too Matt. Well there's a great slogan that um that I've appropriated from Peter Campion who was uh, one of my one of my other guests so uh, get out of our wallets and get off our backs. And, and the simple fact is it's true. I think there's broader implications for this entire for this entire thing. I mean, yes, for us, it's about representation. You know, it's, it's about employment. It's about having control of our lives. It's about having autonomy. It's about having all of those things. Absolutely, no questions. But to me, there are actually deeper issues at stake here, Jason. I don't want to go too much off on, off on this tangent. I really want to keep this local, but there are implications for democracy. Now, if people stop believing in democracy because it becomes meaningless, because you can't go down to your local MP and solve a problem, because there's a critical mass of electorates in the southeast corner, the 73 electorates out of the 93 electorates in Queensland, where your local MP spends does little more than explain to you when you go to him or her with the problem and say, well, you know, sir, ma'am, you're our servant, you're our representative in Brisbane. I've got this issue, I'm really hoping you can help help me with it. And then they spend the entire time explaining why the 73 in the Southeast corner just simply will not accept that, that it's politically unacceptable. And then you throw in party politics, which is uh, which is another, arguably, and I've got to say, I'm the, one of the beautiful things about me doing this podcast is I'm really learning from other people. For me, it's been a massive learning curve, not just technologically or, um, being able to talk to people, I've started to get another perspective on a number of different issues. And I'm, you know, I, I'm worried about, I'm worried, genuinely worried about this too rigid two party system that we have. 
which seems to be further dis distorting democracy at least as much as the 73 uh, electorates in southeast corner. So, mate, yeah, you know, you, you, you're totally right with that. Like, there are so there are so many issues of concern. Um, but look, let's talk about a specific issue too. And we are flying through this interview a lot, um, a, a lot quicker than I expected. And there's so many questions I want to ask you. But can you can you tell me what do you think of the COVID response? What's your opinion on that? Well, that it, it's it's a very sensitive subject. I you know I, I personally believe a few things. One, I cannot understand how the the premier of our state, the leader of our state, is bucked past to the chief medical officer on so many things. Um, if, if, if you're going to make decisions or she's going to make decisions on your behalf, you stand there and, and you accept them as your decisions as well. The hardest part for people up here in the north uh, and, and, and the central regions of the state is we've been pretty much COVID free for a long time. And yet we're still on all the same restrictions as they are down south. Um, and people, they're not stupid. They think it's a political football. That's what they, that's what they think. They think, you know, uh, they're using it as a political agenda. Um, and it's not something that you should be using for a political agenda as far as I'm concerned. I know the hardship involved in running a community sporting organisation, the, the amount of extra cost, the amount of extra hours, the, the amount of extra work that it takes just because of the, of the COVID restrictions for a place that hasn't had anything resembling a case for God knows how long. Um, I will I will say that the fact that I think I, I genuinely think it's a good thing that a lot of the national sports have come to Queensland. I think that's a good thing. That's the money coming into our state. That's something that, you know, we, we shouldn't take for granted. The hardest thing, but is the exceptions, you know, people with uh, loved ones who have passed away or loved ones who are, who are terminally ill and having to quarantine for 14 days, missing funerals. That's tough. Uh, that's really tough for people. Um, and I understand their grief. Um, and it just seems like it's, it's inequitable. Let's say that. Let's say it's inequitable. Um, the fact that we've kept, you know, Queensland fairly COVID free, um, in comparison to, let's say, Victoria, um, it's the good thing. Yeah, but and look, and you look at and you look at what's happened down there. You know, as you as you've kind of touched on there, you looking looking at what's happening in Victoria. It's not just about it's not just about the disease. It's about what's happening with democracy. It's what's happening with representation. It's what's happening. You know, there are so many concerning issues going on about there. Yeah. Look, we've uh, touched I, on that, and we could spend we could spend an hour talking. I could spend an hour talking about that, mate. I, I guarantee you. But anyway. Oh, Michael, Michael, on your word, and, you, and you're not alone. And again, it really comes down to it, it's really, really circular. Fundamentally, what this issue is about, this new state issue, um, and and we do get some. The great thing is, I, I get a lot of comments um, on on Facebook, and we're getting more and more on the Boot Brisbane website. We're getting more and more engagement, and that's fantastic. Some of it is not what I'd call negative, but um, constructively criticism. Well, some are negative. Let, let's be candid. But 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 some some are constructively criti critical, where we kind of um, where they say, well, yeah, have you considered this issue? But the I find, and it's not about winning arguments. It's not about crushing opponents. It's not about any of that. It's just about explaining to people what we're thinking and where we're coming from. And when we start talking about, look, this is about democracy. We just. We want to we want to have control over ourselves, and we're getting increasingly numbers of people um, from both from you know the broad spectrum of politics becoming involved. I've interviewed Rob Pine. Uh, we're getting more and more people who I would define as as on the left and centrist and and um, and uh, other political persuasions engaging us and kind of saying, well, you know, have you thought about this issue and this issue and this issue? I said fundamentally, it comes down, but to this really basic idea. It's about you and me without the 73. So whatever it is, differences that you and I have up here in North and Central Queensland. So when you're talking to your future constituents, uh, it means that you can actually make decisions. You can have real power and you can actually change things. And for whatever it is, differences, the people that I'm discussing uh, have, that we can sit down and come, come to a, either come to a compromise 
or the political system itself kind of says, well, you know, the decision is this. That's where we're going to go with this. It empowers us because it makes the uh, it makes the demos smaller. You can't have a democracy without a demos. But if your demos is too big, and it kind of becomes meaningless. But let's talk about identity. Um, I really want to have a chat about that. I want to get your comments on you know the differences between us as North Queensland, as North and Central Queenslanders, compared to the South. But let's talk about a specific issue. I know you have a lot of knowledge about. What impact do you think a new state will have on opportunities for representative sport and for sporting cultural culture in general? Because I know this is something you're passionate about and you have a deep knowledge of. Well, sport, uh, when you talk about sport and creation of a new state, uh, a North Queensland state, the first thing everyone's going to say is uh, state of origin. <laughs> What's going to happen with, with state of origin? And I'm pretty confident, uh, us North Queenslanders, we, we've always been pretty cocky in regards to our, our rugby league players and, and how good they are. And there's been quite a few of them have come through. Um, and I, I think we could compete at that level. Let's have a try series. You know, I think that'd be fine. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll probably have to let them keep the maroon jersey, uh, but we, I'm sure we can come up with something that uh, at the end of the day, the, the colors won't matter. It's, it's what's in their heart and their ticker. And, uh, and I think a lot of North Queenslanders have that. And I think that is the identity of a, of a central Queenslander. A North Queenslander, a far North Queenslander is a, is a big, a lot of ticker, hard work. I think people probably genuinely think that, the, you know, more blue collar, less white collar, even though there is a, quite a lot of white collar in central North and far North Queensland, but they think the, the people down south are more white collar than us. And, you know, we roll the sleeves up and do the hard yards. You know, our, our agricultural industries, our farmers, our our uh, our miners, you know, out there out there doing the dirty work. So I think that's where we identify, and uh, and uh, and and part of that is 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 just the culture of Central North and Far Queensland. You know, th that's right. Like when I've kind of discussed this with um, uh, some of the some of the Indigenous people that I've I've been blessed enough to have uh, on here, and if who've been great enough to give me a little bit of their time, you know, they've indicated that, um, they've indicated, well, I don't want to misrepresent it. My, my understanding of the conversation that, uh, that we had, especially with the excellent um, Yodi Baskin and, 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 you know, that was a very interesting conversation. And um, i got to say, Des, he was fantastic too. I really enjoyed my conversation um, with him. Both of them said words to the effect of that, they don't want anything specific for Indigenous people and that really Indigenous people up here living purely because of the, purely because of the geographics, we share more in common because we live together. Um, so an indigenous, an, an indigenous person in North Queensland probably has more in common with someone like you or me uh, than they do with someone who identifies as Indigenous down the southeast corner. Um, and that's just because of geography. That's because we're facing the same issues. We're facing, you know, yep. we kind of know what it's like to, to be up here. But staying on, staying on sport, I do know of two families personally who have um, had to have moved to Southeast Corner to give their, to give their kids uh, a representative opportunity. Um, is, is that a common thing? Like, I mean, I personally know yep. of two. Uh, that's that's, that's, that's sort of extremely of common, mate. That happens a lot. Um, to get the to get the uh, the the high performance stuff done, you know, you generally have to move either to Brisbane or Canberra, to be perfectly honest, um, to get that week in week out training. Like basketball, I, I can speak on basketball because I know it, you know, intimately. We, in the state of Queensland, you know, we have what we call the BQ. JBC, which is Basketball Queensland Junior Basketball Championships, which is all the, the South East Queensland Cup clubs. And we have the Queensland North Junior Basketball Championships, which is basically Cairns, Townsville, Burdick and Mackay. We get together three weekends a year because of the tyranny of distance. Uh, that, that's what we can do. Whereas the teams in Brisbane, they play every week. Hmm. So then when we get together... Now, and then we have the Central Queensland League as well, which is which is Rocky, uh, Gladstone, Bundy, and Emma, and they play similar to what we do. So when you get to that state championship, they're they're always an extremely high advantage because they get to play together every single week, whereas our teams only get to play three weekends of the year. Hmm. So that's extremely difficult. And if they want to get to a higher level, they've got to move 
to get that week in, week out training. We do our best. Um, we have, you know, performance officers in place and stuff like that. Um, but it's, it's, it's difficult. It, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get facilities in, in the regional centres. Um, whereas down south, they have, you know, the Queensland Academy of Sport, where they, where they uh, have a, a great facility they can use a lot. So, yeah, it's, you, you lose a lot of kids um, specifically for those reasons. And if you think about it, because one of the one of the links we have, like any time we talk about opportunity, normally we talk about economic opportunity, which is perfectly understandable because it's something you can easily measure. Like we can say how much GST we're losing. We know how much wealth we're creating and how much is being sucked away. That's measurable. It's on our website, incidentally, if you want to go and go and have a look. But there are so many things that you can't measure uh, that I think are so important that really matter to people's lives. Like if you think of, of someone like you who uh, perhaps didn't have your degree of ability or was comparable but didn't have the family support or were a little bit too far west or something, something else like that, you think of the opportunities that have been ripped from our kids to be able to represent, to be able to represent their region, their state, uh, and more important than that, just develop their abilities as human beings to become the best people that they can be, purely because of purely because of this uh, bloated political yeah. entity that should not exist anymore. And, and if I could, if I could just use the basketball analogy and example again, basketball Queensland, which is our governing body based in Brisbane, uh, a few years back now they decided uh, to split their state teams. So basically, they they have a, a South Queensland South and a Queensland North. Now Queensland North runs from Bundaberg to as far north as you can go. That's quite a big geographical area. And Queensland South is, you know, south of Bundaberg, uh, the Sunshine, you know, the Sunshine Coast, the Gold Coast, Brisbane and, and the Darling Downs. So that's similar to the lines of how NQ First thinks about um, a separate state along the is, lines of the, of the Basketball Queensland model. If you're already getting other organisations who are around purely practical issues are already dividing along, are already dividing along, you know, what further evidence do you really need? This needs to happen. And look, it's not just about the money because some of the, by way of explanation, Jason. No, it's not about the money. Yeah, we, we you know, I do read the, uh, and I enjoy the debates and discussions we have on our, on our Facebook site. So even if you're not pro, like if you're out there and you're listening to this and you're not pro in you state, Look, fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. And tell us what you think. Look, we're not out to crush you. We're out to kind of engage with you and, and discuss, the, discuss the matter. And we're out to kind of show you what we're thinking. It's about these intangible opportunities and the fact that these other organisations are doing it. it says to me loud and clear that this really needs to happen. And it's not just about the, it's not just about the, um, it's not just about the money. No, it's not about just about the money. A lot of it's about representation for the people. Um, yeah, which which I feel like, you know, we, we've got good hardworking members up and down Central North and Far North Queensland, but it doesn't really matter to the to the party leaders down south because that's not where they're going to win an election. It's too much politics. Let's take the politics out of it, create our own state so that we can manage ourselves. Now, people, some people will say that I oh, use a dreaming. Well, you don't, you, you can't get somewhere if you do not start. You do not discuss it. You need to talk it. Now, th these are my opinions and the opinions of some of my colleagues, but everybody out there has got an opinion and that's all we want. We want them to have to have the right to have that opinion at the end of the day. And uh, it's not up to me. It's not up to anybody. It's not up to, to the leader of our party or that to decide that this is where uh, a border needs to be. That needs to come from people that are smarter than me uh, in, a, in, a, in an independent commission to, to work out so that we do have that critical mass in central, north and far north Queensland to govern ourselves. And we have that representation. Now, if we look at it, I know Bill's been pretty hot on We look at a state like Tasmania, which has a tick over half a million people. And we're talking about creating a state that would have in the vicinity of around a million people. Now they have half a million people they have an upper and lower house, a lower house of 25 people, an upper house of 15, and then they have 12 senators in the federal government. So it's not just about state government, it's about federal government, federal representation. So if they can do it with half, uh, 
I think it's about 520,000 people possible, uh, around about. Uh, I don't see why we couldn't do it. And I have the utmost faith in the people of Central, North and Far North Queensland that they have the ability to do this. And for people to say that they don't, I find pretty arrogant. Oh, look, you're spot on. And look, you're up against Stephen Andrew, uh, who I'm acquainted with. And Boot Brisbane is not party political. And I know, I mean no disrespect to One Nation. Um, we have our, we have occasional disagreements with One Nation. We have occasional disagreements with other political parties. Uh, but look, One Nation really trade on the perception that Ms Hanson supports regional Queensland. And yet Ms Hanson opposes a new state. Personally, I see that as an effective vote of no confidence. And you've been talking a lot about believing in the people of your electorate and believing in the people of North Queensland. I see that as a vote of no confidence in the ability of central North Queenslanders to govern themselves. It's kind of condescending. It's kind of dismissive. And I'm kind of unhappy with it. Um, I understand that there's, uh, I don't understand that there is a unique point of difference between uh, you and uh, your opponent, who I know you respect as a person, uh, and there's yeah. been a recent, recent policy development today. Would you like to discuss that? Yeah, well, as you said, you know, I've got, I think Stephen's a, a generally nice bloke and he works really hard for our electorate, but we, you know, his, his party, One Nation, has an, uh, a point of difference with my party NQ first. Today we announced in Townsville, we were in Townsville earlier today, um, announcing that uh, if we were to form part of a minority government, it would be a non-negotiable with whoever that party may be, that uh, we would uh, inve investigate, not, well, not investigate, but um, actively advocate for a separate state um, and to uh, install a, like I said earlier, install a uh, independent commission to come up with possible boundary lines, possible capital cities, those sorts of things, and come up with a referendum for the people in those areas, a simple yes or no referendum. So it will be a yes, no question. And we'll let the people decide. That's all we're asking for. We're asking for the people to have the opportunity to decide if they want this or if they don't. And if they say yes, we go from there. Um, if they say no, they say no. That's that's up to the people. It's not up for me to decide. It's up for the people to decide, and uh, and, and come up with the opportunity to form uh, another state in Queensland and have the representation that we believe. Now, One Nation came out, I believe it was in October last year, and 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 Pauline Hanson said that uh, she opposed the creation of a North Queensland state, which, as you said, is pretty much a vote of no confidence in us to be able to, to run ourselves. Now, I don't know if Pauline realises where she came from. You know, she, she started at a fish and chip shop in Ipswich. So, you know, and, and she was able to, to build a party that has some, some pull around the country. She has federal senators. She has members in, in different state parliaments. So I'm pretty confident that the, some pretty smart cookies in central north and far north Queensland can definitely govern themselves. I think that the hardest part's gonna be for the people in South East Queensland because they won't wanna let us go. So it's up to us to make it happen. It's up to us to have people in the Queensland parliament who can um, at least give the people of Central North and Far North Queensland the opportunity to have a referendum, to have a say in this. And I think that's only fair. Oh, you're exactly right. Something I kind of do find reassuring is uh, one of the people that I spoke to was a, 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 a chap named um, David uh, Pello, who is a, a great podcaster who does his uh, fantastic little podcast down south. Incidentally, I'm, I'm happy to plug it. So I, I do suggest that you, uh, that you Google the good source, S-A-U-C-E, and try and listen to him for any listeners out there. He is really good. Now, he's a proud Brisbaneite. He came up and spoke at a number of our events. And fundamentally... He articulated the idea that um, yes, he knew that we would. He knew that the southeast corner would lose. They're going to lose money because uh, right now there's. I don't want to use terms like fake news or or anything else like that. I, I don't. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that serious. I don't think that's concerted. Uh, but there are a lot of people. Who, well, there is. Let me articulate this correctly. There are many media commentators down south um, who are kind of trying to be dismissive about this 
and indicate that we're nothing but silly yokels who kind of don't know what we're talking about. We're the ones that, that, that will miss out. And we need the, uh, and, and I've even kind of see it, Robbie Catter has actually kind of spoken about this, that we need the civilizing hand of the Southeast corner to make sure that we're, we're going to live as decent human beings and not slip back into barbarianism without, <laughs> without the Southerners there. But David said that for him, the thing that resonates most and the reason that he follows us is because it's about respecting the, respecting the idea that people need to be how to have representation, that they need to be able to have authority. They need to have control over their own lives. And it's these principles that will get us, that, that will get us over the line. And I, I think he's spot on. And I think the more that we push that and the more that we remind people of, of, of the Southeast that that's the go, the more support that we will get. But I think you've touched on a really good point. Uh, and, you know, when, I'm going to say, I'm going to use the royal when, when you get into politics and, and when you're sitting down there in the, in the Tower of Power um, down in Brisbane, it's going to be difficult to get it through, through Parliament. I think we'll be able to do it. Don't get me wrong. But I think one of the difficulties is going to be this. So imagine you're the, um, imagine you're the MP of Milton. Um, are you going to stand up there and say, I promise if you vote for me, I'll ensure the good people of North Queensland have good, they'll get to keep their money and have good roads. No, we will not be sucking wealth out of them to get pedestrian bridges <laughs> down here in my electorate. They'll keep their money and they'll have good health care. They'll have, they'll have all these sorts of things. They'll have a good footpath. <laughs> well, that's right. There's no way. There is no way they're going to do that. And it's not because they're bad people. It's not because there's anything sinister going on. They're acting in their own rational self-interest. You think about it, you think about it, Jason, because they kind of know that we are funding them. They know that we need them. They know they need us. Need our money. Yeah. They know that. Um, but if you get, and it goes back to this other issue that we've been discussing that comes back time and time again, that is, you know, one of the one of the not quite the keystone, but in the arch of ideas that we have, that is one of the one of the rocks holding up the keystone, is this idea that um, is is this is this idea that because of this distortion of democracy with the seventy three electorates in the southeast corner, it's making things it, it's making things bad for democracy because they're using that power not to empower themselves, not to empower their own wealth creators, but using that coercive power to stick their hands in our pockets and take our money and use it for their own good. And that's right. right. Look, there are some moral issues going on there. There are some political issues. There are on so many different levels that that is just wrong. And, and that, that's right. And, and as I said earlier, it will get worse. You know, the, it, they'll, they'll end up with more electorates down there and less electorates here with redistributions with the people because a lot of it's to do with centralization everything's down in the southeast corner when it doesn't have to be and specifically in my region here in Moreni, why the uh, sugar research australia is in indrapilly i don't think there's too many sticks of cane in indrapilly mate but i know where i live there's there's quite a few sugar research australia headquarters should be based well i i've made it a a, a policy announcement a while back you know 40 million dollars to bring sugar research australia back to Mackay. You know, Mackay has always been known as the sugar city. So why why shouldn't we have, you know, Sugar Research Australia back here in Mackay, um, close to where the sugar's actually being grown? You know, you've got the Burdekin, Proserpine, Mackay, um, and then a little bit around the Bundaberg region and further up north in Cairns and Babinda and, and Tully and Cardwell and those areas. That's a long way from Indrapilly. So... <laughs> Uh, centralization having everything down in the southeast corner for the sake of you know uh, you can sort of understand the political people and the bureaucrats doing that because they want to make lives easy for themselves because it, it's not that it's not that they hate well, they it. do but the, the, the problem is also matt is that you know everything being centralized down there all the money from all the the staff and all the workers and the research gets spent down there it doesn't get spent in these areas so and that's another issue so Oh, and yeah. it's about recruiting. Like, you, you think, so, so, so you're advertising for sugar research and it's a government job and you're down in Brisbane. Like, are you going to recruit from someone from Mackay, Townsville, Bundaberg, Cairns, and pay for their move down there? What? No. Of course not. You're going to get someone, you're going to get someone from Brisbane. And again, but it, it's more than that, Jason. Like, you think of a lot of the, 
you think of a lot of these industry bodies who want to. So it's not just about it's not just about government, which really comprises of two parts. So you've got your elected representatives, and you kind of think about it, uh, your politicians, but they don't do the day to day governing. The day to day governing is done by bureaucrats, as you've pointed out. The parties. We've got this critical mass of bureaucrats in the southeast corner who are further d- distorting democracy even more, and then there are the people who the bu- uh, who want to influence the bureaucrats and elected representatives. So you've got your industry bodies, you've got your other organisations like that who kind of go, well, we want to be relevant. Um, so you've got your cane growers, you've got your, and again, you name whatever it is, industry body you're like, or for that matter, non-industry bodies, sporting bodies like, you know, basketball, Queensland or whatever it is, they have to go and stick their people down in the southeast corner, further centralising power, further making things more. You get critical mass that's just never going to end. So it's just, it really is. That's why I use the analogy black hole. I, I cannot think of anything more more accurate. Like, I mean it as a metaphor, but it's kind of true. That's actually what's happening. There is a black hole that's distorting time and space, you know, politically. I find it, I've just been sent through some, some information. I find it very interesting. You know, our party came out with their statehood policy today. Um, as we touched on earlier, and, and uh, that's gone out to the media and will be on all sorts of media and social media and those sorts of things. Um, and it's enshrined in our constitution for North Queensland first, and I believe we're the only political party that has that enshrined in their constitution with the objective of creating a separate state. Now, I've been told uh, quite recently that uh, the Catter Party, since our announcement, all their candidates are going on social media supporting a new state, which is, you know, at the end of the day is a good thing, but it looks like they're jumping on the coattails. Uh, I think, you know, Catters have been there a while. They've been a political party for a while. We're the new boys on the block. We've only been, you know, an established political party for just over 12 months. We don't have a lot of funding, but we have some definite principles that we go to. And, you know, I think it's, the Catters have had a long time to try and do something about this and, and haven't done anything about it. And now our party's come out today um, with a plan and a policy and they're jumping on the bandwagon, which at the end of the day is a good thing for what I believe, genuinely believe. Um, if, they're, if they're genuine, I think that's a good thing. Um, they may say that, you know, I think it might have been six or seven years ago that they, they tried to get something through state parliament and, and, our, and the leader of our party uh, voted against it. But once again, we're talking about political parties. Uh, he was a member of, a, of one of the, the big parties and they were probably told by people, by bureaucrats, what they can and they cannot do. Now, we're different. Um, each individual member, although we have a, a party policy and, 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 and we, we toe the party line, we do have our own opinions and, and we all have the opportunity to create these policies together, which I don't think the big parties have. So, yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yes. Um, again, I, I, I don't want to be party political. And, and the thing no. about it is, you know, I, I know uh, Robbie, I, well, I'm acquainted with him. It would be an exaggeration to say that I'm good friends with him or anything like that, but he's, he's a very decent chap. And yeah. I, I'm quite keen to have him on, actually, so I don't want to say anything. No, no, no. no. I, and I, and I'm I don't not want to say anything too bad. So, you know, thing. I'm if, making... If the counterparty's on board, that's a good thing. You know, mm. um, we, need, we need as many... We need as many people in the, in the state parliament that aren't in the major parties or the Greens uh, that do support a separate state in uh, central north of Barnard, Queensland. The Catter Party is on board with that. I think that's great for the people of central north of Barnard, Queensland. Unfortunately, One Nation have been against it in the past. Um, but, uh, and I, I think, I'd have to check, but I think Clive's party have said a few things about possible uh, a, a, a new state, but yeah, I'd have to do a bit more research on that. Hmm. Well, look, um, thank you very much. This has been most enlightening. We're actually coming up to the hour. So, uh, look, I'll, is, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Yeah, well... Tell us a little... Yes. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's probably a little bit off topic with the, with the, with the separate state, but I, I just wanted people to be aware of uh, the North Queensland first policy on crime, which is a big issue in central north and far north Queensland, although some of the people down south don't seem to think that it is, but yeah. Um, 
we, we've taken a pretty hard line stance. We, uh, mainly, we want more police. We want an extra 500 police, basically from uh, from Gladstone all the way up to, to Cape York, um, including Indigenous police officers. And I know you touched on Indigenous before, but having some Indigenous police officers in there, especially in those areas with high, big Indigenous communities, I think would be very beneficial. We probably need to look at uh, how offenders are punished um, and, and our policy does go into that. And uh, a f there's a few other bits and pieces, but, but the main thing is more police on the beat because the best way to stop crime is to have more police out there watching and deterring people from doing it in the first place. Hmm. Mate, look, th look th thanks very much for that. Um, sincerely appreciate it. We're pretty much right on the hour, so I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much for taking time into your very busy schedule. Uh, you know, within, within the last minute or so, I'll, I'll, how many kilometres, I'm, I'm going to throw this out there, mate, how many kilometres have you driven over the past week? Uh, about 1,500 oh. in the past week, yeah. Right, and I apologise for my, I've got a head for radio, so I apologise to all you viewers and the black rings under my eyes. But, uh, yeah, that's who I am. Well, no, no worries. That's, you know, it's tiredness from the driving all the time. And incidentally... Um, uh, Cairns is about uh, 1,600 kilometres from um, from Brisbane. So you've driven about the distance, <laughs> about about the distance of, um, of 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 us from them. And and you think you think of other you think of other measurements like London is about 1,600 kilometres from Warsaw. Uh, now, if anyone said to you, you know, London should be running Warsaw or Warsaw should be running London. Or indeed, Berlin, which is somewhere in between, should be running both of them, which, as we know, was tried in <laughs> a couple of times last century. People would say no and, in fact, probably take up arms to prevent something like that from happening. And yet, here we are. Mm. Right. Yeah, mate. Oh, it's, it's, it's a big geographic area, but, you know, we put our hand up to do it. So, more than Absolute. happy. Absolutely. Look, um, thank you very much uh, for taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. Best of British luck to you um, and look forward to watching your uh, career in politics with interest. Thanks, mate. I appreciate the opportunity.